am very, very excited to pass it over to the VP of Go-To-Market Enablement and Solutions at GEM, Matt Cleave. He is going to be leading a fireside chat with two incredible talent executives from Peloton. They'll be sharing more about Peloton's strategic vision for talent acquisition and how to accelerate growth in partnership with the business. Over to Matt to introduce our special guests and kick off today's fireside chat. Thank you so much, Marissa, and thank you for everyone in the audience for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce from Peloton, Tim Brown, Vice President of Talent Acquisition, and Will Blaze, Director of Talent Acquisition. Tim and Will, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Matt. Excited to be here. Nice to meet you, Matt. Great. So uh, I probably, like many in the audience, have been a, a big fan and a loyal customer since 2017 uh, when I first started writing. But I know that there's been so much change in the business since then. So, Will, if you're open to it, would you mind spending a few minutes just walking through the, with the audience the evolution of Peloton's business? Sure. So I've been at Peloton for a long time, um, almost um, almost five, five and a half years, almost almost six years. Um, so when I joined Peloton, we had one product, we had a bike. Um, since then, um, our product offerings have really evolved. We have um, digital products, we have several hardware products and um, lots of new fun stuff uh, in, in, in plans for the future. Um, so essentially we're doing a lot of things here. Um, and from a talent acquisition perspective, it makes it a really interesting place to work. Um, but you know, we're a hardware company, we're a software company, we're a media company, we're an experience company, logistics, retail, apparel, design. Um, there's a lot of things going on underneath the Peloton roof. Excellent. And well, I have to imagine that with, you know, just such a big shift in the business and, and adding so many different things that the team is working on, coupled with, you know, the challenges that we've all faced over the past few years with COVID, um, tremendous growth, and in some ways, a lot of tailwinds for the organization with people wanting to, to maintain a healthy lifestyle at home. But I have to imagine that that's also put a tremendous pressure on the team uh, from a talent acquisition perspective. Would you be willing to share a little bit more about kind of what the impact has been for the team over the past year and a half? Right. So every year, um, the company really has evolved um, and the challenges keep changing. Um, for us, um, being in a remote environment and a lot of a lot of other teams are kind of experiencing this, just like the need for to be connected, to have really good data, to have really good communication in general has just been super magnified in the past year and a half. Gem um, has been super helpful with that, um, but essentially just Keeping up with our growth, scaling our team while we're also remote has been really interesting. I think Tim Tim might be able to give us the exact numbers here, but we've like probably like quadrupled our team in the past like eighteen months. Um, so staying organized, um, measuring what we're doing, um, keeping communication lines open, making sure we're productive has been really important more than it was before the pandemic. Excellent. And from a um, from a talent strategy perspective, in any particular roles that have been challenging, how, how has the evolution been in terms of you know these different lines of business that you're opening, and how that's translated from a strategy perspective? So, um, once upon a time at Peloton, I remember one of our co-founders told us all once, like I've I've had almost every single one of your jobs. So we've really gone from having um, generalists to specialists. Um, you know, we're no longer looking for just full stack engineers. We're looking for staff level firmware engineers to work on our tablets, or we're looking for like principal engineers on like our platform and SRE, SRE orgs. So um, the need for sourcing going outbound, and, and we do have really good inbound, has become even more important for our, our um, talent acquisition team. Excellent. Well, and with that, is that a strategy that is only in a particular part of the team or culturally, do you think of that as really an evolution for, for different members of the team? I know that the, the team has had some pretty intentional strategies there. So anything you can share in terms of, of that as a, a culture within the organization would be great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, taking a step back and just, again, like looking at our business and all of the different things that we're doing, each org and, and what their goals are requires diff really different kinds of people inside Peloton, like inherently making us a really diverse place. So um, for engineering, you know, being on the offensive and going to market and like sourcing and looking for really great talent, um, you know, other teams, like we might get 
a product manager role and Peloton is the coolest place in the planet to be a product manager. Um, we might get a lot of inbound there and it's like looking for the best person that applied. Um, and then Tim can attest to like other teams like retail or logistics or supply chain. Um, they're all different and there's, there's all different kinds of folks we're bringing into the company. Yeah, well, I would just add, you know, one of our values here at Peloton is together we go far. And part of that challenge in the complexity of almost like being the Tesla of fitness companies is that we manufacture, we sell, we service, and then we provide the digital content for our products. And so we have to be constantly thinking about the challenges of building something here, but then we have the capabilities over here then to support it or deliver it or continue to scale it. And so because of that, there's a lot of interesting challenges that come up from a talent acquisition perspective where one day you're focused on hiring people for the retail locations in the malls. And next day you're focusing on machine learning and artificial intelligence engineers. And it provides a, a lot of fun, but also a lot of challenges as we scale the team. Excellent. And Tim, you mentioned something interesting there. Together we go far. Um, can you talk a little bit about also maybe the, the culture within the organization uh, when it comes about implementing some of these new strategies and, and really different priorities within the business? Sure. I mean, some people don't realize, but the term Peloton actually describes like the lead group of riders in a bicycle race. And so that's sort of the background for the term Peloton. And so part of our culture is, you know, when we have individuals like Will that are driving innovation and sourcing through platforms like Gem, how do we then take that skill set and then magnify that skill set and that capability across the rest of the team? Um, when I joined Peloton, I think my first big shock about a year ago was just how many Google Sheets we were tracking things in. And Google Sheets for recruiters creates just lots of redundant work. It's not productive. You have to become experts in Google Charts. And so I think one of our biggest priorities initially was how can we get recruiters out of Google Sheets to get more time back to be productive? And to Will's point earlier, we actually still have a bit of a popularity program. We average problem. We average hundreds of applications per position. And these are you know, amazing parts of our community that are passionate about Peloton, but don't necessarily have the insights into all the roles that we're looking to fill. And so giving the team the capacity to be able to focus more on how can we both deliver great candidate experiences for those people that are applying, but also have capacity to go to the market and attract other talent that may not be aware of the really interesting problems and opportunities we have each day and get them excited about joining the Peloton team and helping us grow our community. Excellent. I, I think that it's certainly something that we've heard, I think, in the industry, this notion of talent nurture. And obviously, there's no shortage of, of people that want to come join an amazing brand and, and be part of the ride. But that really intentional strategy on trying to find you know, the best talent out there and nurturing those relationships over time uh, is really top of mind for for so many. Uh, has that have you seen that really be a, a fundamental shift in in strategy, Tim? And has that changed any of the priorities in twenty twenty one and beyond? Yeah, I would say we we've seen a big shift, and and part of this is also driven by Peloton's desire to be an anti racist organization. And our Peloton pledge is how can we look beyond just traditional candidate profiles and start to look for candidates that are in a more of an apprenticeship model or other kinds of early career models that extend beyond just traditional internships. And that requires change in culture and change in philosophy that you know, we continue to work with the organization to evolve towards, as well as helping to provide career paths for our own employees that aspire to move into different roles and how we invest in those employees to help them grow their careers too. Excellent. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask him is if, if we think about really this, this, this shift in priority, so many different things happening in the business, really thinking about talent acquisition as being on the forefront of a lot of these strategic business initiatives. Um, how, how do you think about that from an alignment perspective between you know, the, the talent acquisition team and really being centered around the business strategy and driving that from a partnership perspective? Yeah, I mean, here in town acquisition, we kind of consider ourselves as the team that helps to power Peloton, right? If we can't bring the talent to the table that the business needs to drive new products, to drive innovations, to drive amazing member experiences, then, you know, ultimately the business suffers as a consequence. I think that the big challenge or maybe the big change we've seen in the role of talent acquisition, especially talent acquisition leaders, you know, like Will and myself, is you've got to think like a business person first. 
And I think the days of just hiding behind, well, we're in HR or we're in people, you actually have to show up as a business person. And I think oftentimes when I'm looking at data and reports and working with Will to kind of export content out of Gem to bring to our business leaders, we, we, we follow maybe a supply chain leader. And what's interesting is that our reports on like availability metrics, on conversion rates, impression to throughput to offer rates, it looks an awful lot like the other kinds of metrics they see when they're looking at sales cycles or supply chain cycles. And so I think the, the role of a recruiting manager, recruiting leader is almost bordering on econometrician these days and how we think about data and supporting our business leaders with the data that gives them the insights to know that they can get the talent they need to be successful. Yeah. And, and Will, I think, you know, so many, um, you know, want to go down that path of really starting to operate talent acquisition as a business and with a strategic partnership uh, from business and functional stakeholders. What are the, some of the some of the things that your team has done in terms of operationalizing that? When you think about not just the strategy, but sort of the the day to day tactics and and the cadence that you're that you're operating with from a business perspective. Right. Um, it's it's one thing to ask like what is our conversion for offers for the company, and now it's another thing to say like how are we converting staff level engineers for this one specific department. Um, so getting more granular with the data, which is something that has been really important, the bigger that we've gotten and being able to like dissect the data um, has been magnified again because of the environment that we're in. So um, we use Gem a lot um, in how we show up to our business. It helps us tell a story, um, whether it's like a weekly meeting with um, a hiring manager where we're just looking at the talent pipeline and seeing like, every single stage that we're not leaving candidates behind, we're moving people forward, you know, you, for this entire department and the consolidated view in GEM, you can see like we've got six on sites next week. That's super helpful. Or looking at like time series data um, for like conversion of like different levels on different departments. Um, you know, GEM has really equipped all members of our team to be able to have these conversations. Excellent. One other thing that I've heard be top of mind for a, a lot of organizations from a data perspective is this notion of, you know, Tim, you mentioned sort of the strategic alignment and what comes next, thinking about, you know, forecasting things like the capacity of the recruiting team based on new roles that may be coming. Are, are those also things that, that you're looking at? And also, how do you share that kind of information with your business stakeholders to make sure that there's, there's good alignment in, in terms of expectations? I was just in a capacity modeling meeting earlier today with our financial planning and analysis team, Matt. So good timing for this question. And I think similar to how maybe a manufacturing plant looks at its throughput rates, et cetera, that's part of what we're also helping to provide to our business and our finance leaders is some insights into what can we help to drive from a talent standpoint across the different job families, the different regions that we hire in globally and help them to use that to do forecasting, to think a little bit around um, what might be challenges that we have in certain markets and how do we address those challenges. Um, the complexity of Peloton's business is also just expanding. As we enter into new product categories, to Will's point earlier, we just recently announced an amazing partnership with the incredible Choin Township Ohio to open the Peloton output plant. That's gonna be an over 2,500 employee manufacturing facility, a really a world-class facility that will also embody uh, Peloton's design ethos and our culture. And so I think these kinds of certainly interconnected challenges are the things that we lean into data and we lean into insights to help us make good decisions as business leaders first. Excellent. And um, Will, I'm also curious from your perspective, as, as you look to trickle that you know effect down the team in terms of really thinking business first when it comes to to planning all of your activities, whether it's you know from sourcing candidates to finding out the best sort of you know inbound workflow, wherever those candidates are coming from, and thinking about the priorities of the business, how do you get your team in the mindset of really focusing on you know not just the day-to-day -day recruiting activities, but the strategic needs of a business and how to translate that from an operational perspective? Right. So I, I think like when you when you break it down and you look at the the challenge that's put in front of like all of our different recruiters in their different spaces. Um, it's all different. Um, so um, working with our hiring uh, managers and department heads, they let us know like what our priorities should be. You know, what are the people that we needed three weeks ago, three months ago, um, and starting there. 
Um, and then from like a talent acquisition perspective, um, using tools like GEM to have um, strategic kinds of partnerships with our um, stakeholders to, you know, potentially work with a hiring manager and do a send a sobo or a send on behalf of email where we're reaching out to really top notch candidates and it's like looking like uh, um, a potential um, co worker or manager that wants to work with um, this this employee or, or candidate. Um, so it's it's all a little bit different, but it you know at the end of the day, recruiting is a team sport. Um, recruiters are part of of their they're an extended part of the teams that we support. And um, you know, luckily at Peloton, from like founders down um, to um, line managers, like everyone likes to get involved. Excellent. And one other thing that that I wanted to mention, I've, I have had the fortune of spending some some time with the team prior to our conversation. And I know you talk a lot about this notion that, um, especially for for you know very critical roles for the business, that you're very specific on targeting uh, the best talent out there in the market. That it's not just sourcing teams looking at that, right? You talk about this notion of like strategically augmenting pipelines and making that really a habit for everyone on the team. Um, any any tips or tricks that you would share with anyone that that you know maybe struggles to find time to do that today, but knows that they need to build that muscle across more than just a segment of the recruiting team? Um, how have you thought about really driving that from a a culture perspective within the team? I mean, we, we've definitely brought in leaders that um, prioritize recruiting, um, that you know make it a point that a, a like a large percentage of the time should be spent bringing in really good people into the company. So I think like starting there is is awesome. Um, from like more of like a blocking and tackling perspective, and like you know day to day, um, using Gem uh, for example. We have a, a hiring, uh, a department head rather, that really loves getting involved with recruiting and they'll be like, hey, you got to talk to this person. They're great. Can we get them in here? Or I saw this person on LinkedIn. Can we reach out? Um, Gem has enabled us to create projects and kind of organize that. Um, so it, it used to be like, hey, did we actually hear back from that person to we have them all organized here. This person's interested. This person isn't. This person opened our email but didn't reply. Maybe you can help us and send another message or add them on LinkedIn. Um, so using technology to stay organized and be, you know, much more specific and targeted in outreach is really helpful. Excellent. And if we think about going back a little bit to the data that you're actually leveraging, is you know, Azure gaining traction with candidates and how, how do you make ensure both that op, both the operating rhythm but also using data to tell the story of what's happening within the organization uh, we talked about a little bit about forecasting about pass-through rates different types of metrics that you're sharing any other thing things top of mind there in terms of how you're using the data or maybe even key things that you look for to ensure the health of some of your key pipelines i can take this one well if you want i mean i think we look at a very wide spectrum of data sets. So everything from like, what's our email response rate by recruiter and where does that create maybe opportunities for coaching to help that individual write better, more customized emails? Um, how do we help candidates navigate the process and how quickly are we moving from a stage to a stage to a support a candidate who maybe is in a competitive interviewing environment, move quickly on their timeframe to the right kind of role? Um, certainly looking at like, where do we have maybe gaps in diversity opportunities and providing our recruiters with affirmative sourcing tools so that we can go to market and try to attract even more diverse talent to the organization. We work closely with our comp partners and understanding what trends are we seeing compared to maybe what trends they have in their survey data and try to get ahead of the market when we see things happening in, in changes in, in market demand for certain talent skills so that we can be ahead of that. And then I think um, you know a big push for our team going into this. So we just started a new fiscal year here at Peloton. Is actually be focused on really candidate experience and manager experience. I think we've been running this amazing machine that has, um, to, to Will's point, you know, literally tripled in size to meet the doubling of the company of the last couple of years. And so the intent now is not necessarily that we slow that machine down, but that we try to curate candidate experiences. Um, we deliver such amazing member experiences to folks who are part of our community like you, Matt, and we take that very seriously and watch really closely. Are you getting the value out of your investment in Peloton? 
And now I think we want to say, hey, how do we extend that mentality by tracking things like net promoter score data insights from our candidates, from our managers, and ensure that this promise that we make out there around the Peloton experience for our community is equally experienced by our candidates who have an interest and a passion and want to be part of our company. Excellent. I want to go back to something else that you said, Tim, in terms of this, this mindset. You, you mentioned, I think, a couple of different um, ways to think about, you know, running town acquisition like a business, also the supply chain view, or you're, you're really leveraging data to, to optimize the process. Any other insights you can provide in terms of, you know, how talent leaders should be thinking about adopting, you know, a different mindset as like probably now is, is more so than ever. You know, town acquisition at the forefront of a lot of business strategies and, and also feeling some of the challenges that come along with that. What advice would you give from a mindset perspective to other talent leaders in terms of um, how to drive this type of strategy? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a balanced approach because on one end, you want to show up with all this kind of data and these insights and help support leaders in understanding the implications of these on their businesses. But on the other end, we're also in the people business. And so I think while it's really important to focus on the quantitative elements of what we do and the tracking and all the, the structure behind that strategy, it's also equally important to slow down and like talk to some of your candidates that are going through your process, talk to new hires, talk to recently hired managers, um, try to get out of only looking at dashboards and spreadsheets and sorry, the dog's doing a tour in the background there. <laughs> and, 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 Block time on your calendar, whether you're a lead recruiter or recruiting manager, or you're leading the function, to still keep connected to the people side of what we're doing. And that not only extends to the candidates, but finding time to talk to random managers, finding time to talk to your business leaders, and really pulse check, like, how are they experiencing it? Because sometimes your data says that everything's green, but the reality is that maybe there are things that are going beyond the data that you're not paying enough attention to. And so I think it's it's about being not careful, but not over indexing so much into the analytics side of what we do that you're ignoring the fact that at the end of the day, like we are literally changing people's lives, oftentimes for the better. And that amazing moment when you bump into a new hire that you brought in and they're now driving something in a meeting is probably like the most gratifying part of what we do. And so not losing touch with that part of our job is really important. Awesome, I, I I love that, and I can I can definitely say as a as a as a loyal customer, it, it definitely has a tremendous impact, and I can see that that from a not just the candidate experience, but I think every potential candidate is also a potential customer, right? So that I think I know that that's top of mind for so many that we talk to in in not just the recruiting process, but but really the brand. Um, Will um, any kind of last things that you may want to share from? You know, and taking some of these strategies and as, as you're operationalizing them with the team and, and the day in and day out, any sort of last words of advice that you can give from a, um, a practitioner perspective uh, in terms of how to implement some of these strategies, whether it's with data, whether it's with this, this notion of talent nurture, uh, anything that we haven't touched upon so far that, that you'd like to revisit? I, I think for me, like I, I love simplicity um, in, in how we kind of communicate things and, and GEM has really enabled us to do that. Um, to, to really like seamlessly show hiring managers like where we are, how we're doing, you know, here's our time series data for the past six months, 12 months, um, you know, just thinking about like, you know, what is the easiest way to kind of communicate like what, what we're, what we're talking, what we're, what we're doing here, like the storytelling. Um, Tim has definitely helped me with the storytelling and, and uh, you know, she, like having great data to, to and dashboards and things like that to show to, to the team. So. Uh, that's helpful too. Um, and then um, one thing for for um, you know, shout out to our recruiting programs team having really great hiring training and, and um, you know fun you know a little fun fact for for the Peloton fans at home we we have some of our instructors doing our virtual um, interviewing and hiring at Peloton training, which is really fun. So that can't hurt either if you have some world class instructors inside the company. <laughs> That's amazing. And I bet you have your own analytics around that because I, I know all of all, myself and all of my friends all have our favorite instructors. So I, I, I bet there's some analytics spin there as well. <laughs> we should we have do track time. our completion rates on training as well. So yeah, actually there is some data <laughs> behind it. 
<laughs> well, listen, if you want to experience the amazing interview training that we have here at Peloton with our instructors, we are hiring. We have hundreds of open positions, including our own team here in Talent Acquisition. So we definitely invite you to uh, check out our opportunities. Excellent. And, and Tim, also, um, maybe one last word of wisdom from you. Anything we haven't covered yet from, from sort of the strategic interaction with the business and the mindset of talent leaders? Any final words of wisdom for everyone? You know, I would say you have to keep close to your business fundamentals. Um, you know, listen to your investor um, relations calls. Pay attention to what's actually happening in the industry. Um, try to think like your business leaders are thinking relative to how they're operating their respective departments. It helps you, I think, fast forward a little bit to some of the solutions. And, you know, I think a, a lot of our leaders, like your best day as a recruiting manager is when you're coming to the leader with a resume for a job they don't have open because you're thinking ahead of where their business is going. And you're like, hey, there's an amazing person that I think would be a great part of our growth for our, our company. And when you do that, you pivot from being in kind of reactive fill a requisition mode to now I'm actually helping to drive business strategy and helping support the growth of my company, not just necessarily as a member of the people team, but actually as part of the focus of helping our business be successful. Oh, and have fun, right? Like we're, we're not solving cancer over here, at least in recruiting, um, you know, we're not building rockets. Like we're ultimately trying to help people embrace their dreams of getting their dream job. And uh, I can't think of a job that's more fun than that. Awesome. And, and, and maybe while that's not the case, I can definitely say that you are certainly improving the health of a great many people, especially as we're uh, as, as we've been trapped at home these this past year and a half. I know that uh, you've got the thanks of myself and my family. <laughs> um, Tim, the last thing that I wanted to, to end with, uh, we have a, just a couple of minutes left here. Uh, would you be willing to share sort of what comes next for Peloton from here? I know there's so many great initiatives and, and things the team is working on. Uh, any insight you'd be willing to share would be, I think, fun for everyone on the call. Yeah, I'd love to walk you through our product roadmap, but I really like my job. So I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately, today. Um, what I would say is that um, Will and team are just investing a lot of energy in bringing in all kinds of amazing talent to help us innovate and create new products that we hope will add even more value, um, not just from like nutritional fitness, but certainly even in the strength space, et cetera. And so that's a big focus for the company is how do we help to displace really all aspects of that gym experience in someone's home? Um, so that's, that's a big focus in a lot of the product categories that we're leaning into as part of our future roadmap. Um, on the opposite end, a, a big part of our focus is how can we make fitness available to everyone? And so whether it's, you know, helping people get exposed to our digital content app, and we are constantly offering different kinds of deals to help people get easy access to fitness. And then we just recently announced that we're lowering the price point of our original bike by here in the US at least by $400, which is just unbelievable to help make the bike more accessible to so many people who maybe in the past saw it as, uh, as, as unattainable. And you know that combined with some new financing that's available for our Bike Plus and our Tread, we think it's really going to help to democratize fitness and make it available to more people. And so I think um, we're excited about the future of the company. We've got some amazing roles, some amazing growth ahead of us. And I uh, just appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit today about how GEM has helped to empower that for us and helped us to continue that, this path forward and grow as a talent acquisition function, certainly as a strategic function for our business. And uh, can't wait to see where else the future takes us. Uh, but where it's, uh, it's been an exciting ride and certainly even more to come. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for the time and insights today. I think, you know, even beyond just your use of Jim, just the strategic thought that goes into really operating as a business, running a supply chain, how that translates up and down the entire organization, uh, I think is a great model for where so many organizations want to go. And, and there's no better time than now uh, to, to really be at the forefront of business strategy. So thank you again so much for your time uh, and insights today, uh, Tim and Will. We really appreciate it. And with that, I will turn it back over to Marissa.